Hi, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Aid. I'm Eric Miller and today is another car shop episode. We're going to be talking about your freight car fleet. How do you figure out how many cars, total freight cars you should have? And more specifically, how do you plan the right fleet size for each industry? I'm going to be talking about that today and show you some examples of what I do. So looking at the larger fleet size, how do you figure out what the total number of cars is? What's the best figure? Um, what I do is, is I guess I'm a bit of a purist, and my rule of thumb is that um, if something does not have a function on the layout, then I don't need it. And so basically I take a look at all of my industries and figure out what freight cars I need for the, the entire layout. And that's essentially what I use for my total fleet size. So you'll only see on my layout cars that I need to uh, operate with and, and to hold op sessions. And so uh, basically what I do then is I plan according to my industries. And so in the past, I've definitely um, been guilty of changing industries, adding a new one, maybe taking one out, maybe replacing it a little bit. So I'll have to go through an exercise where I sell some cars or I buy some new ones. Um, it doesn't happen too often. And so um, as, as long as your layout is, is mostly static and mine's, you know, I would say settling a little bit in the last year or two, uh, then you don't have to have to worry about that. Of course, the problem is, you know, what happens when a company comes out with a nice new car that looks cool and you want it um, and, and then you have to go out and buy some more? Well, I don't think it's ever a bad idea to add a, a car here and there for an industry if, if you want that shiny new product that just came out. Um, for example, I can't wait to get my hands on a 60-foot SPSF high-Q boxcar, but I do have a plan for that car, and it's going to be going to uh, this industry over here, my uh, distribution warehouse. So, again, it, it relates to having a plan for everything, and, and that's, that's really what I, what I strive to do for this layout. So, um, I'm not sure if a lot of other modelers out there are like that or not, but I thought I would just give you my example and show you how I come to that total fleet size then. And so the way I do it is I look at each industry um, individually, and then basically after I've planned out the freight cars for each industry, then that then becomes my total fleet size. So with that, I'm gonna take you through, I'm gonna show you a specific example of that and how I come up with the total number of cars for that industry. So here in South Omaha is one of my favorite industries the cold storage facility. I like cold storage facilities because they're so modern. And the other reason I like it is having a layout that's based in the South Omaha area. Uh, it really relates to the, the stockyards that used to be here. And so, and the other reason I really like this is it's a, it's, it's a pretty good, it has a, a really good prototype. There's, there's an exact um, customer like this in South Omaha. It's actually switched by the Union Pacific. So this is one of my favorites, and it's it's really easy to figure out how many um, freight cars you need to serve this industry, and I'll show you. Uh, so what we have here, this is the track diagram for Miller Refrigerated Services. We've got three car spots, it, doors A, B, and C, and you can see on the model, um, you can see two of the doors are occupied by reefers. Uh, there's a third door hiding back behind that uh, plumbing supply building. And so, so we've got three car spots. Okay, so that, what you do is you take that information and you figure out what is the maximum number of cars I can have at this industry at once. And the answer to that is three. So you have three door spots. And so what if, um, so then I, I kind of play the game of myself of like, what if we have our local come down the tracks and it is switching the maximum number of cars possible. So let's just say that the local comes and takes three cars out of here and puts three cars back. So then you need six box cars or six reefers for this customer. And so that's the answer. Now, sure, there's some other tangibles that, that you can think about and say, well, you know, I, I have off spot locations where, you know, if, if the industry is full here, um, the car can sit at the off spot until the next op session or, or the next time it gets switched. Um, so I can add a, a couple more. Or let's say, you know, it's very rare for the industry to have all three doors filled. So you know, maybe I only need four or five. Oh, very well. But I would say that that is a, a pretty good number is six. And so you'll see that I've got um, these two cars here, and then I've got four more that are sitting in my freight car drawers um, that are ready for, for the next local assignment. Um, so this is a really good example. I don't follow this rule 100%, but it's what I use to guide. 
any decision that I have when I've got an industry and I want to know, do I have the right number of cars? Um, and so, and there are times when I think to myself, eh, you know, I, I'm, I might be in the mood to sell a couple cars. So I'll kind of think through my industry and say, well, the, you know, this industry, you know, like ready mix, for example, I I'm guilty of having too many uh, little covered hoppers because I kind of like those. Um, so sure, I could sell some of those if I wanted to, but I like them because they're cool. Um, some of them are are ones that I've custom made with uh, different decals that you don't find very very often out there. Um, so I, I think that's kind of cool. So I'm going to probably keep those. Um, but but those are the kind of things that you can think through and say, okay, you know, maybe I do have too many cars for this industry, or or maybe you know if if I was doing a Miller refrigerator and I only had um, three reefers and I would say, oh, I need need more. Um, one of the things I recently did late last year was I, when I was working on this building, I actually ended up extending the track and adding another door. Uh, so then I, I bought a couple more uh, box cars reefers. And, and so just to fill out that space. So it's, it's a good rule of thumb, I think. Um, and then one other thing to consider is how you have your uh, car routing set up, right? So for example, I use JMRI and um, JMRI lets you um, set the number of, of requested switches for each location. So uh, Millard Refrigerated is part of the Albright location. And so I have a certain number of cars. And the way I set that up is I try to have it set to about half of each industry's capacity um, so that this, this should get, you know, maybe one or two cars inbound, one or two cars outbound. Um, just that, that it's a pretty good, good mix, pretty good balance, I think. Um, so again, you know, you're probably not going to switch the whole uh, customer. You're not going to probably switch all three of these doors. You're not really going to need six cars, but it does give you a little bit of variety. I'm sure that the prototype has more variety than that coming in and out. Um, again, they're going to probably be the same type of car. Um, for example, now at Miller Refrigerator, all I ever see are the white ARMM reefers. Um, so they're probably not going to look like quite like this, but this would be kind of an early 90s um, as, as as close as I can figure out to uh, early 90s box insulated box cars or reefers for this customer. Um, but again, the prototype is going to have more variety. You're not going to see the same cars coming in and out. Um, but I feel that six cars really gives me a good variety. Yet it's it's a way that I can kind of put uh, a cap on the number of freight cars that I buy. So um, that's that's just an example of of, uh, of an industry. I'll show you uh, one more example now. The other example that I want to show you is one that I just mentioned, which is ReadyMix. And so that's the, the customer here, which is again a single spur. ReadyMix is a little different though, because there are multiple car types that come here. They're not all the same, right? And so it might be a little bit more confusing. And I think this is one that kind of lets you then um, go a little bit more crazy and, and get a few more freight cars than you'd really need. And so, because it's, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out, right? I have... Um, JMRI set to work basically this this as uh, three different tracks on this single spur because I have gondolas that come in, empty gondolas that come in and bring out uh, fabricated bridge components. I also have um, sand and gravel that comes in these covered hoppers. Then I also have open hoppers um, with sand and gravel. And then I also have uh, cement cars, as you can see that, that car in the back. So uh, lots of different commodities coming through here and just one spur. So let's take a look at the track diagram and see how many cars it says fit on here. Well, I say spot gondola or flat car, so that's one, and then spot uh, hoppers, which is four. So there's there's four hoppers over there. Okay, so that's five cars. So that means I need ten cars, right? Um, but again, sometimes you you know you could maybe have an extra hopper if if you don't have that gondola there. And then again, with the different types of hoppers that you need for sand and gravel. Uh, open and closed hoppers or open and covered hoppers and also the covered hoppers for cement um, you know you might want to say well let's let's double that figure so that could be eight so maybe I need 16 different hoppers and then you know at least two gondolas or flat cars but um, that's when you kind of get into the the variety you want you want a little bit more variety in your freight cars um, so three or four gondolas might be better if, if you have a low number there um, so that, that's what I recommend anyways, if you only have one spot at a customer, um, to get at least three or four cars, just to have a little bit more variety and, you know, car two probably isn't going to kill you or break your budget, right? It shouldn't, otherwise you're in the wrong hobby. <laughs> so, um, and then again, for the covered hoppers, like I said, I'd recommend then 16 for this one, uh, which is probably about what I have. I might have a few more just because, like I said, I like these custom cars that I did for the OLMB, the Ashgrove cement car back there. So... So um, 
if something is really something that you really like, which I, I could probably say that about all my industries, but um, this this one is an extra special one for me. Um, you know, it gives you an excuse to go ahead and buy a few more freight cars. So so basically, then once I know all these industries from the easy ones like the um, refrigerated facility, the cold storage over there, to the more complex that has several different car types. Um, you go through each industry and then you add them up and that's basically what your your entire um, uh, fleet freight car fleet should be and so I, i've mentioned this in other videos but i basically have a right about 100 freight cars maybe a little bit more um and i have let me see a count again i got seven or eight customers i've got four on this end and i believe i got four more um in the albright area right one two three four yeah, so I've got eight customers. So, um, but that's slightly more than 10, 10 cars a customer. So that's about right. You know, you've got some like this one that will require maybe 20 cars. And then the other one that I just said would, would be six cars. So you've got a range. This is one of the larger customers on the spur. So, so that's about right. Um, I haven't gone too crazy, but you know, it allows me a little bit of wiggle room if I want to to buy something new that's just announced, you know, like that SPSF 60 foot high box boxcar that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that, um, it's probably a good idea to, to try to not put a cap on your, your total fleet because you want to always be able to buy a couple. Um, but, um, then again, if you're getting into, if you have a, a layout size like me and maybe you're getting into like three or 400 cars, then maybe you have a, have a few too many. I don't know. It's, it's personal preference. But again, what I'm talking about here is, what you need to, to operate. And this is kind of what I would think you would need to be able to operate, you know, the minimum number of cars, plus a few extras to give you a little bit of variety and, and some, um, you know, some mix of, of freight cars out there to keep your, your guests interested. And also just, to, for, for, uh, your own sake, so that you've got some, um, some options out there add a little bit of color. So, so that's kind of what, what I've, what I've recommended uh, personally and what I've found to work pretty well and has uh, played out well in the operations too. So just to recap, uh, again, what I feel is the right number of freight cars per customer depends on how many spots you have and then also uh, the different types of cars that you might have for each industry. And again, if, if you just have a single spot, you might want a few more. Um, but what I, what I recommend is is at least two cars for every spot. That way you have the inbound, outbound, um, and then you just tally that up for, for each industry, total it up, and that's your, your entire freight car fleet. So that's what I found to work. That's uh, my recommendation. Um, I'd be interested what uh, everybody else does out there. If, um, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what your ideas are um, and what's worked well for you. Um, but I found this a, a pretty good way of, of being able to control my fleet size a little bit. Uh, like I said, I don't think you should really have a cap on on your total number of cars. You want some flexibility in there, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but then again, I, I try not to go too crazy with, with how many cars I have. Um, but I found this to, to work pretty well. So hope maybe I um, showed you some new ideas, maybe some stuff you hadn't thought of before. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below with anything else you want to see on my channel. And uh, thanks again for stopping by. Appreciate you and uh, appreciate the comments. And I'll see you next week.